We will build an image classifier, a neural network that takes an image as an input and tells us what it sees. The Cypher 10 dataset contains 60,000 images labeled with 10 different categories and that's what we will train our model on. We will implement a convolutional neural network using PyTorch. PyTorch is an open source machine learning library developed by Facebook's AI research lab. It offers a flexible and intuitive framework for building and training deep learning models. I will run this on Google Colab, a Jupyter Notebook environment hosted by Google, which also offers GPUs to train your neural networks on. To enable GPU support, you go to this little arrow here, change runtime type, and then you can select T4 GPU. If you want to pay for a faster GPU, you can also select more powerful options like the V100 and the A100. To install all necessary dependencies for the project, I run pip install torch, torch vision, torch summary, numpy, matplotlib. I run the cell and the installation starts. First, I add all the necessary imports at the top of the notebook, so I don't need to scroll around much during this video. In PyTorch, we need to specifically define the device on which we want to train or run our model. By default, we are using the CPU. However, if CUDA is available, we will use the CUDA device. CUDA stands for Compute Unified Device Architecture, which essentially means we are using the GPU. I have also added a case for running this code on a MacBook with an Apple Silicon chip. Let's run the cell. And indeed, we have a GPU available. The images we'll work with have a size of 32 by 32 pixels. Each pixel consists of three values, one for red, one for green, and one for blue, each ranging from 0 to 255. To ensure our model learns efficiently, we aim to have normalized values though, ranging from minus 1 to 1. So we will also add a bit of pre-processing. But first we need to download the dataset. Fortunately, it is a very common dataset to train on, so there are helper methods available for downloading it. We use Torch Vision to download the dataset. Fortunately, Torch Vision also provides us with a pre-processing API. We create a transform function consisting of two transforms. First, we transform the image data into tensors with values ranging from 0 to 1. And then we normalize them to be between minus 1 and 1. Next, we download the dataset by calling dataset cipher 10, specifying where the data should be stored and how it should be transformed. For the training set, we set train to true, and for the test set, we set it to false. To access the dataset efficiently, PyTorch offers a concept called data loader. We create two data loader instances here, one for the training set and one for the test set. The batch size is identical, but we only shuffle the training set while loading. I also define all the classes in the dataset for later use. Let's briefly examine the dataset. Our training set has 50,000 images and there are 10,000 images in the test set. Each image has a size of 3 by 32 by 32. Three color values for 32 by 32 pixels. I use matplotlib to show the first 10 images of the training set here. But there are two things to note. First, matplotlib requires the color values to be in the last dimension of the image, so we first switch the dimensions around. Second, our data loader transforms the pixels of our image to be between minus 1 and 1, but matplotlib needs them to be between 0 and 1 again, so we denormalize the image here before, before showing it. I also print out the assigned label class name for each image. Okay, there is a frog, two trucks, a deer, two cars, a bird, a horse, a ship, and a cat. Our convolutional neural network takes a 32 by 32 pixel image with three features per pixel as input, one feature for each color. We apply a convolution layer with a kernel size of 3 to the image to extract 64 features. Convolution with a kernel size of 3 means we take 9 values from the image and multiply them with some learned weights to get a new output feature. We do this for every possible position of this 3x3 3 3 window on the image, giving us a 30x30 30 30 matrix of feature values. 
If we want to have 64 output features, we use 64 of these kernels, each with their own learned weights and repeat this process 64 times. Of course, behind the scenes, this is done in parallel for all positions of each kernel. Next, we use a max pooling layer with a kernel size of 2 and a stride of 2. This means we take every 2x2 two two window of the resulting feature map and take the max value for each feature and communicate it, giving us a new feature map of 15x15 15 15 with 64 features. We feed this into a new convolution layer which takes in 64 features and outputs 128 features and let the size of our output be halved again by a max pooling layer. We now end up with a 6x6 feature map with 128 features. Now we need a brain to turn these features into a probability of what is seen in the image. We flatten the feature map and feed it into a fully connected linear layer which has 4608 input neurons and 120 output neurons. We add another fully connected linear layer with 120 input and 84 output neurons and one last layer with 84 input and 10 output neurons. One output for each label class in our dataset. This fully connected neural network will then make sense of things. All outputs from the convolution layers and fully connected layers, except the last one, are fed into a relo activation function to add some non-linearity. The last output is fed into a softmax function to turn the output into a probability of which class of object is seen on the image. First, we define all the different layers we need in the constructor. We need two convolution layers. The first takes three input features for red, green and blue and outputs 64 new features. And the second takes 64 features and transforms them into 128 features. Both use a kernel size of three. We define our max pooling layer with a kernel size and stride of two, which halves the size of our feature map. Lastly, we define the fully connected layers going from 128 by six by six input neurons down to 10 output neurons. In the forward function, we connect all these layers. The input x goes through the first convolution layer into a relo activation function and from there into the first pooling layer. After that, this process is repeated with the second convolution layer. We flatten our feature map and feed it through all the linear layers and the output at the end through a logarithmic softmax function, giving us the probability output for each class. We create an object of our convolution neural network and send it to our device, in my case, the GPU. Using summary, we can display how the given input of a 32x32 32 32 image with three colors is transformed through the network. As expected, the first convolution outputs a 30x30 30 30 feature map with 64 features, which is then halved into a 15x15 15 15 feature map with 64 features, and so on until we end up with a vector of length 10. Now it's time to train our model. If you want to know more about training a model and loss functions, please watch this video here as I describe it there in more detail. We first instantiate a loss function and an optimizer. For negative log likelihood loss, we use NLL loss, which is optimized for working with log probabilities. And Adam is a typically used implementation of backpropagation. Next, we loop over the entire training set 10 times. Because we utilize the GPU for training, at least I do here, we need to send our input images and labels to the GPU first. Before we process our batch of images, we need to clear all the gradients that might still be there from the last batch. We feed the input images to our neural network and calculate the loss on the output. With that loss, we calculate the gradients for all the weights that need adjusting and with optimizer step, we actually tweak the weights a little. Because this training will take some time, we output our current loss every 2000 batches. For that, we accumulate all the losses in the batches and calculate the average loss. So let's train our model. I will speed up the process here so you don't have to sit through it. Done. Let's see how we are doing and try some images. This function takes the image and the probabilities output by the model. We use matplotlib to display the image and the probabilities side by side. First, we denormalize the image and show it. Next, we draw a bar chart of all the probabilities for each class. We are retrieving one batch of images from our test set and getting the first image. 
Before we can hand it to our model, we need to add one more dimension that is used for the batches and send it to the GPU. Then we let our model make a prediction and obtain the probabilities. The probabilities are the logarithm of the softmax output. To get the actual probabilities, we need to exponentiate them, remove the batch dimension using squeeze and transfer the output back to our CPU. Next, we can easily pass the image and the probabilities to our view classification function. So this is supposed to be a cat. This is clearly a ship, another ship and a plane. Now let's evaluate the whole test set. To do this, we iterate over all the images and labels in our test set, obtaining a prediction for every image. To compare the results, we need to find the category index with the highest probability. We then accumulate the total number of images tested and the correct prediction. 69% accuracy. This is significantly better than random chance. But to get a CNN like this to perform even better, we would need more convolutional layers and implement some other tricks to prevent overfitting. If you're still curious and want to know, for example, how a model like ChatGPT works, this video here will tell you all about it. Until then, have a lot of fun coders.